Carcinoid syndrome has been well known about for many years, but over the recent years we have seen a change in awareness and changes in treatment on how this is managed. This is a condition that is experienced by some patients with neuroendocrine tumours, usually patients with small intestinal nets, uh, but it can be other primary sites like the lung, and it's characterised by having s typical symptoms of flushing, uh, diarrhoea, sometimes wheezing, as well as some other symptoms. It's usually caused by overproduction of serotonin, uh, so largely it's associated with patients with metastatic disease. So we need to be thinking about it. This, when we have a patient with neuroendocrine tumor, with metastatic disease, who has these symptoms, and then it needs confirmation with biochemistry. The impact on prognosis of having carcinoid syndrome is that, in fact, it reduces overall survival. So we know from a recent publication uh, from the SEER study data uh, that patients with neuroendocrine tumors who had carcinoid syndrome had an inferior survival to those who did not. And that's probably driven by some of the complications that we know can develop, particularly the long-term complications, and these are fibrotic complications. So patients can develop fibrosis within the uh, intestine, causing bowel obstruction, but also fibrosis of uh, the heart valves, particularly the tricuspid valve, which then causes carcinoid heart disease with its own complications. With relation to the pathophysiology of carcinoid syndrome, this is usually caused by the oversecretion of serotonin. Uh, serotonin is then associated primarily with diarrhea. Uh, other peptides can cause symptoms like the flushing, for example. So these are produced predominantly through liver metastases into the circulation, uh, causing uh, the symptoms that patients then develop. We can then confirm that by undertaking biochemical tests. The traditional one is using a 24-hour collection of uh, urinary 5-HIAA, or 5-hydroxyindolic acetic acid. And this is a metabolite of serotonin, and that can be measured in the urine in a 24-hour collection. Some centers are now using blood tests, which measure this more easily. The main treatment strategy for dealing with carcinoid syndrome has for a number of decades been the use of somatostatin analogues. Initially these were short acting and now have been replaced by monthly depot preparations that can be given. We know that that can control carcinoid syndrome in two thirds to three quarters of patients, which is great. But for the patients where they do not have enough control of symptoms uh, or in patients who initially have control and later break through, then we need to be thinking about changing our strategy. There are a number of options that we can consider, either liver-directed therapy to reduce the amount of bulk uh, in the disease, which is largely driving the carcinoid syndrome. Sometimes we can use above-label uh, somatostatin analogues. Another treatment that's been around for some time is interferon. And one of the new treatment options available is telotristat, which we know can control carcinoid syndrome-related diarrhea in patients not adequately controlled on somatostatin analogues. The ongoing challenges with carcinoid syndrome is how to uh, prevent some of the fibrotic complications that patients develop to improve longer-term survival, and we need some new treatment strategies to be able to do that. Mm -hmm.